No, the floodlight. Now the floodlight consciousness is working all the time. Every nerve end that we have is its instrument. You know you can go out to luncheon or something and you sit next to Mrs. So-and-so and you go home and your wife says to you, was Mrs. So-and-so there? Yes, I sat next to her. Well, what was she wearing? Well, I haven't the faintest idea. You saw, but you didn't notice. Now, because we have been brought up to identify ourselves with the spotlight consciousness, and the floodlight consciousness is undervalued, we have the sensation of ourselves as being just the spotlight. Just the ego that looks and attends to this and that and the other. And so we ignore and are unaware of the vast, vast extent of our being. People who by various methods become fully aware of their floodlight consciousness have what is called a mystical experience or a cosmic consciousness or what the Buddhists call bodhi, awakening. And the Hindus call moksha liberation because they discover that the real deep deep self that which you really are fundamentally and forever is the whole of being all that there is the works that's you only that universal self that is you has the capacity to focus itself at ever so many different here and nows. So when you use the word I, this as William James said is really a word of position like this or here. Just as a sun or star has many rays, so the whole cosmos expresses itself. You, 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 all the different variations. It plays games. It plays the John Doe game, the Mary Smith game. It plays the beetle game, the butterfly game, the bird game, the pigeon game, the fish game, the star game. Just like uh, these are games that differ from each other, just like backgammon, whist, bridge, uh, poker, pinochle, or like waltz, mazurka, uh, minuet, and so on. It dances with infinite variety. But every single dance that it does, that is to say, you, is what the whole thing is doing. But you see, we forget it. We don't know. We, we, we brought up in a special way so that we are unaware of the connection. Unaware that each one of us is the, is the works. Playing it this way for a while. And so we have been taught to dread death as if that were the end of the show. It won't happen anymore. And therefore, to be afraid of all the things that might bring about death, pain, sickness, suffering. And if you don't know, you see, if you're not really vividly aware of the fact that you are basically the works, you have no real joy in life. You're just a bundle of anxiety, mixed up with guilt. Because, you see, when we bring children into the world, we play awful games with them. Instead of saying, 